I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are gonna dye some 100% alpaca yarn. But before we take a closer look at our yarn, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Michelle Suzanne Martin from Hales Corners, Wisconsin. Let's go look at the yarn. Simply Alpaca is a line from Knit Picks where they use the natural, either wool in the Simply Wool line or alpaca in the Simply Alpaca line, they use the natural colors that come from the alpaca and blend them to create the wide range of colors that they have available. And I will have an affiliate link to this line down in the video description. This is the most bare yarn color. Alina, I don't know how you say that. <laughs> uh, but it is Aaron Waite. To about 246 yards per 100 grams, and it's 100% super fine alpaca. This yarn is so, so soft, and I'm excited to dye it today. My plan is to try to go for something that feels vibrant and bright, because I think a lot of times alpaca yarn you find has a more like muted tone, maybe slightly more sophisticated, and so I'm hoping that by going bright, maybe that'll show through in the end. Because sometimes when I dye alpaca, I find that the finished colors end up being a little bit more muted than the same colors might be on wool. And I haven't decided if I am gonna add like a skein of stroll or swish into the mix so we can have some comparison, or if we're just going to simply dye alpaca today. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Anyway, I'm gonna go put on some zip ties onto this yarn. I like adding zip ties on. It's another tie. It makes it easy to flip the yarn and do whatever it is we're gonna do. But I do want it to pre-soak in just some plain tap water overnight. That way we know the fibers are well saturated for the first layer of color we plan to do on this yarn. Here's my 12 quart pot and it is maybe half full with water but no acid yet. And I have a 1% dye stock, an older 1% dye stock of some royal purple. Maybe there are 25 to 50 milliliters of this stock. It shouldn't be that much, but I'm gonna rinse out the bottle. Of course, I left the lid in the sink. But I wanted to start off by dyeing our yarn uh, with a base layer of color because I plan to do some like chunky color patches on top and I want to cover up the bare color. Oh dear, as lovely as it is. I do have an extra random skein of yarn that is in our pre-soak. Let's see how it is. And what's funny is that, it's funny how like muted colors feel on here. Okay, I feel like this is not gonna be super pastel. It might be more of a medium purple, but I think that that's okay, because royal purple can be like super bright, but also deep. We'll have to see what this does, uh, and then that'll dictate what colors we do on top. But I'm thinking bright blues and bright pinks, and maybe a brighter purple. One, two, three, Four, let's do six tablespoons of white vinegar. And we're gonna go heat this to set the color. But it's funny because I think that if I had done this same amount of color on a skein of stroll, the color wouldn't necessarily feel as muted. I think that's something just with the alpaca, but that's fine. All right, it'll still be pretty light, even though this is a very pigmented color. So I'm gonna go heat this on the stove and we'll see after 30 minutes if the water is cleared or not. All right, we've been heating for about 30 minutes and I think I created the exact same color as my gloves. <laughs> I don't really know what I expected, but I don't think that was it. Ooh. It is a very pretty color. It is a hair on the muted side and a little bit less pastel than I was originally thinking of. So I think we'll go for like bright, bright pink and like a bright, bright blue. But I'm gonna set this aside and let it cool off completely before we start playing around with other colors. 
As we set up for our next layer of color here, I'm gonna take a skein of Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon, and quickly dunk this into the same dye bath we used to dye this purple color. I don't think that really brought any color into the stroll, but it did uh, bring acid into it, so we're ready to dye for our next round and we can use it as a yarn mop. Now, if you look at my pan here, it is stained a little bit yellow and pink from another project I did today. And I'm taking this yarn mop that has acid in it uh, and I'm running it over the pan and I see zero color transfer onto the yarn. So I think whatever was with these fiber reactive dyes, I'm not expecting that to cause any transfer onto our alpaca yarn that we have here. And I'm gonna to wanna to be so careful with this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it is super wash. And you can see that like, I can't even really spread it out uh, because of the way it's clumped together, but that's okay. I'm gonna put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses and gloves. And then we're gonna start adding some bits of brighter colors around and sort of tapping them in. And I think it's gonna create something variegated and beautiful. And we're gonna do this with three primary colors from Dharma Acid Dyes. We've got Fluorescent Fuchsia, which I'm gonna to want to be very light-handed with, Caribbean Blue, which I should also be light-handed with, and Deep Magenta, which of all these three colors, the Deep Magenta does strike the fastest. <laughs> so, We'll see how this goes and how it starts layering uh, once we start applying it on top of our purple. All right, let's start with the fluorescent fuchsia. This will set the tone for us. Now, the reason why I want to be a little bit careful as I'm doing this, and I'm just adding it into little spots right now, which I'm sure I will miss some. <laughs> But I'm curious how this will show up against the purple. And just for reference, that's the kind of color we're talking about here. Uh, this is a very vibrant pink. But I wanted to bring in some like splotches of color. And like they're not going to be perfectly repeating. They're going to be a little bit random. Some of these patches might be smaller than others. But my goal is to have something that feels lively and it'll still be soft but I want to feel some smaller patches of color because sometimes with this type of yarn things can kind of all blend together a little bit. All right Caribbean blue. Okay this one is showing up more and I have a feeling rather than bright blue this might end up looking like a deep blue mixed with the purple because if you take uh, Caribbean blue and mix pink into it you get you get sort of a deep blue and just for reference this blue is quite bright but oh good like I'm feeling some darker darker blue notes but you definitely feel some of the electricity that is in here and I'm not trying for speckles. We just want some of these colors to have like a, a vibrancy to it. But it's okay if we have yarn with little to no color on it um, because that's the way we've set things up. We've got that purple base. Uh, and so then that should be nice and fine. But the reason for also using the deep magenta is to have a little bit of a balance. Now this can give a bright pink that isn't neon. Uh, and yeah, it's just a different overall tone. And sometimes using multiple colors that are close together, but that are not quite the same can give a really pretty effect when that comes together on our yarn. And so again, we can see our pink and blue blending a little bit, but this is a still bright pink, but not as neon. And honestly, it's feeling like the comparison right now 
It feels so much more red, even though it's very much not. It is a very true, a very primary pink. I'm trying to find all the spots I added powder. And see, it's okay if I touch other spots and bring the color in. Uh, the goal is to work the colors through a little bit. But also, I need to see what the colors want to be and what they want to do. And I'm sort of listening with that because, and I'm now gonna flip the yarn. Uh, since the yarn isn't wanting me to spread itself out a ton, it's staying a little bit clumped, uh, we're going with that. <laughs> and so that means that we might end up with something that is somewhat more repeating just because you know, we're getting things that are on a lot of the strands all at once. And you know, that's just the way that it is. And okay. All right. But now I'm going to do a bit of the same kind of thing. I love like working with alpaca. My favorite pair of mittens I ever made was a convertible pair of mittens and it's 100% alpaca. I wear that through a lot of the winter. Uh, and I even like stick a finger out so that way I can play Pokemon Go <laughs> while I am wearing it. Uh, so I adore alpaca for its warmth. And yeah, I mean, it's just warm and cozy. But I'm trying to think, I haven't dyed it that much. I actually have another in my brain at least, dying to knit project I've wanted to do. And I just, I don't know why I haven't. Uh, I got some, I think Andean Treasure was what I was considering because that had the right yardage for the patterns. It was like a hat and um, like infinity scarf kind of set. Oh, whoops, I intended, yeah, actually I'm gonna swap. Well, I'll tap this blue in, but I was like, I want to do the deep magenta before doing the Caribbean blue. So then I'm able to kind of play the pinks off of each other a little bit more. And so that's easy to remedy. <laughs> All right, but I was starting to say, yeah, like I always have it in my head that, oh, I should dye more alpaca because I love working with it, right? <gasps> And Indy started barking, so I just uh, finished adding the deep magenta, and now I'll pop back. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep talking about my yarn stash, my imp rather impressive yarn stash, and how I keep trying to work through it. But I'm glad that I took the time and did the pinks before coming in with more of this Caribbean blue, because the pinks are so close to one another that it is a tiny bit a tiny bit hard uh, once you have the blues in to sort of distinguish between them. And so I'm happy with that. And I'm noticing I'm definitely tapping out uh, the yarn using a finger that isn't one of the ones that I use to add the dye. And I think a big reason for that is that I'm afraid of bringing in too much of the Caribbean blue. <laughs> in more and our yarn mop is looking very pretty. I will note that these colors are not staying put on the alpaca yarn. In general, I have found that uh, alpaca and other animal fibers beyond wool and superwash wool require a little bit more acid, a little bit more heat, and just a little bit more time. And so now I'm flipping the yarn again, which the nice thing is since there's dye down there, it's going to bring in some fun notes. I really hope that this isn't, this isn't felted, <laughs> oh gosh. I probably will reskein it if it is gripping to itself a little bit. Uh, but let's do a hair more deep magenta in just a couple of places. It's not that saturated, but I really like this. 
I love how variegated it is because there have been times when I've done like squeeze bottles on, actually maybe that was like a non superwash MCN, but fiber types that are non wool. And the colors just ended spreading so much there. So I'm debating now as I move this again. And I think as I'm trying to not make too much of a mess, I'm going to add a little bit more acid onto our yarn. And just give it a nice little press to work that through a little bit. It's not worked through evenly and that is okay. But now I'm gonna take, well, I have to go get the steamer basket. I'm gonna take this yarn and put it into a steamer basket to steam set it for 30 to 40 minutes. And honestly, when it comes to our yarn mop, I'll probably stick it in the same steamer basket because I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. The colors are so random. And overall, if I were to take this yarn mop right now and squeeze it, there are some pinks, but most of the dye that's on here has started to strike the yarn because that's the difference of what happens once you have a <laughs> super wash wool. And the nice thing, see the blue, little bit of blue staining that's left? That comes off of this pan. So I don't know what's going on with everything else. With those other stains. But I didn't see any of that yellow go onto our alpaca or our yarn mop, which is great. And now our steamer basket is starting to heat up. You can see I stuck everything in here. And so I think because it's not that warm yet, we'll start with 40 minutes and come and peek and see how we think things are going. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And it's been about 40 minutes and I just turned off the heat. I am curious. I wanna see, there's maybe a hint of some color that I see that went down into the bottom, but I'm not super concerned about that uh, because that could have, this was the same bath that I used for the purple layer. Are we dripping? No. Okay, so what we can do to test this, because I don't want to agitate it, is we can tap. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And I tap on it. I see some color. But, ooh. Ooh. I don't love that. What about this guy? That guy should, yeah, that has no color. So there are a few things that could be happening right now. Uh, one, but I'm going to take this vinegar and just sort of pour that on some. And we're going to pop the lid on. And the heat is now off, but I'm going to leave the yarn in here to cool slowly. Uh, the water is still warm. It'll cool down over the span of a couple hours. And maybe... You could see that it's starting to get steamy again. Maybe after a little while, I'll remove the lid again, but we're gonna just give this some time. So here's why I'm not completely freaking out right now. Just a little bit freaking out. We did a direct powder application dyeing our yarn. And so while I did my best to tap all that dye into the yarn, it's possible that some of that dye was not that wet. And if the dye isn't wet, it can't come into contact with the fibers bind to our yarn. And so if some of that dye is just maybe a little bit damp on the surface and hasn't really sunk into the fibers, then it can't absorb. So what we might see is a lot of color coming out initially when we do the first rinse, but then the bleeding could stop pretty quickly. Or we might go in a couple hours and sort of tap on the yarn and not see color come off in that same way. So I have been in this situation before where I've done like a little tap and like, ooh, there's a lot of color that's coming off right now. And then when I went to wash it, the bleeding wasn't bad. So that's what we're hoping for. <laughs> that's what we're hoping for. Um, and yeah, 
yeah, we can leave the yarn in the in a dye bath to soak for a bit uh, because also sometimes leaving it in to soak, those little bits of color finally dissolve and then everything's good. So I'm gonna just remain calm and later this evening we'll check in on the yarn again. But don't worry! And Michelle, you should already have a tiny bit of a sense of how this all turned out uh, because as my lab partner, well, either Sometimes lab partners get the yarn before the video comes out, sometimes the yarn arrives after the video comes out. It depends on how uh, fast I publish it once I finish editing. But I would never send something to a lab partner that I felt was a mess or unusual, a mess or unusable or ruined. And so if this yarn is ruined, then I would film a completely different video for my lab partner, Michelle. But I don't think the yarn is ruined. I have high hopes high expectations, uh, and you know, all it is is that there's some dye that didn't set uh, nearly as fast as it would have on superwash wool. And you know, that's why we try these things on different bases, because we learn. <laughs> we learn and then we learn a little bit of what to expect. So then we know how to adjust a technique and things like that moving forward. But anyway, I'll see you later today. <laughs> All right, getting ready to wash the yarn. It was in the pot for a couple of other hours before I removed it. And now tapping it and really kind of pressing into the yarn, with the paper towel, nothing is coming off. So that additional time and heat, or even potentially the acid I poured on, really did make a difference. But now, I'm gonna bring the yarn in and we may as well include our mop and we can see if there's any color bleeding. So far so good. Now, this alpaca yarn, and the good thing is it doesn't look felted. Now that it's suspended, um, the fibers separate really easily. I think it's just grippy and so it likes to stick to itself a little bit. Um, but I took a little bit of dish soap on my hands by rinsing it off into the water. But I don't see any bleeding. That is always great. Gently removing it, fantastic. Now, since this is non superwash, I don't want to have the water running on top of it. Sometimes a little, I'm a little bad about that, but I'm trying to be more careful. So I'm gonna fill up the basin there and then I'll put it back in and this actually might be enough there wasn't that much soap and there's no bleeding at all which is a far cry from before when we saw all that dye and we're like oh no oh no <laughs> but anyway I'm gonna go put this through my spin dryer and then we'll hang it up to dry and have some conclusions but oh my gosh I haven't even really been able to focus on the colors the lines and the transitions between the colors feel so soft. It almost feels like it's iridescent. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to show you. Apologies in advance for my voice. It is almost back, but I wanted to film these conclusions. Here is our dry alpaca yarn. And I'm really happy because I was concerned that the color was going to end up a little bit too muted when I wanted there to be some pops of bright. And we still have an overall more muted soft colorway, but I also didn't pick like a neon palette that would give us the brightest colors. So I think one of the next times that I go and dye alpaca, I should go for neon uh, and see if I can get it bright or if something about the depth of shade and alpaca fibers just results in something that feels more muted in the end. Have I ever seen neon alpaca yarn? I don't know if I have. I mean, I haven't looked that hard, but I digress. This yarn is unbelievably soft, and oh my gosh, my nails match. Um, it is so soft. I mean, it was soft before, and you can see that it is a little bit grippy. I have a feeling it would felt, but it pulls apart easily, so it's not uh, felted beyond use or anything. It'll be really easy to wind into a yarn cake. I think I knew as soon as I had dyed our base color that we likely weren't going to be super bright because the purple was going to mute things down. And that's okay. 
what I am happy with is that we've got some great short sections of color. Yes, the colors have softened in some areas, but sometimes when I dye non-superwash yarn, and in particular yarn that has cashmere or alpaca, the colors sort of blend, spread, and soften to an extent that is more than what I was initially going for. And so it's fun to see that the colors can remain in these smaller patches. And I really love how it turned out. Here is our yarn mop. This yarn both shows how bright the pinks and blues can be, but at the same time, it also shows how pastel they could be. And so I'm super, super glad with this palette that on the alpaca, I started with that purple base. Uh, to give a little bit more, because otherwise there's a lot of similarities between this yarn and our alpaca yarn. Michelle Suzanne Martin from Hales Corner, Wisconsin, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. And once again, I'm so sorry about my voice right now. I had a blast dyeing this 100% alpaca colorway, and I have a lot more alpaca bare alpaca in my stash that I need to dye up. So if any of you have any suggestions of what you would like to see, please leave the comments down below. If you would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner like Michelle, go and check out the lab partner listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. And of course, there's also tons of ready to ship hand dyed yarn that has been featured in one of my videos. I have hundreds of skeins of yarn in the shop and so you should go and browse through. It's a great way to help support the content here. Michelle, thank you again for being my lab partner today. These colors are so, so me. I love them so much and love how it turned out. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.